In this section, we're going to do optimization problems. So these are application problems that allow us to use the derivative. For optimization, you're usually trying to find the highest or lowest. So if you see something in the problem that says maximum, minimum, highest, lowest, what you're going to have to do is take the derivative and set it equal to zero. The reason why is because when you have a graph that goes up or down like this, the slope of the tangent line is zero whenever you have a top of a hill or a bottom of a valley, and at that point is where you can find a maximum or a minimum, and that's why you have to do that in these kind of problems. So with that, let's go ahead and do this first one. Now what makes this uh, section a little bit more difficult is you have to first set up the equations that are going to be used. So before we get into the derivatives, we need to set up an equation. What you're looking for is something that only has one variable in it. So if you have something that has two variables, it's better to substitute something and eliminate one of your variables if you can. That's the technique that you, we're going to have to use on this problem here. So it says, what's the smallest possible perimeter? Okay, so perimeter for a rectangle, that means that we need to know the formula for that one. So the one you want to use is 2w plus 2l, 2 times the length, 2 times the width, that's going to be your perimeter. Okay, now let's keep reading. It says whose area is 36 square inches. Okay, so if we have length and width at the two sides of our rectangle, we know that when we multiply them together, because the area is equal length times width, that should be equal to 36. So that means that we have another equation, this one here, length times width is equal to 36. Now, what you want to do is, because it's talking about what dimensions produce the smallest perimeter and find the smallest perimeter, that means that we need to take the derivative of the perimeter. Now, it, it's better to have one variable in it only because that's the information we've been provided. So you want to do a substitution on this one. So we can either get rid of the W or get rid of the L. It really doesn't matter. In this case, what I'll do is I'm going to solve for W and put it in here. But again, it makes no difference which variable you decide to solve for. You'll get the same answers. OK, so for this, I'm going to solve for W. W equals 36 over L. Then I'm going to put 36 over L into here in place of W. So P equals 2 times, instead of W, 36 over L. And then I want to simplify this. So this part right here, that's going to turn into 2 times 36 is 72. And L is in the bottom. I'm going to write it with a negative exponent to make it easier, because eventually I'll be doing a derivative. I'll use the power rule on that. And I have plus 2L over here. So now I can do this, because I have one single variable that's here. Let's do the derivative. So p prime is equal to, use the power rule, negative 1 comes down, negative 72L to negative 2, and then plus 2, derivative L is going to be uh, just 1 there. So now that I have this, what you're going to do is you're going to set it equal to 0. When you set it equal to 0 and solve for L, that's going to give you one of your dimensions. So from this problem, we're probably going to have to find the dimensions first, and then we can actually find out what the smallest area is. Now, once we have that complete, we're ready to solve it. Negative 72 over L squared plus 2. I'm going to move one of these terms over. So 72 over L squared equals 2 over 1. Probably it's best to cross multiply on this one. Cross multiply 2L squared equals 72. Divide by 2L squared is 36. Square root both sides. You're going to get L is equal to 6. Now, you do get plus or minus 6, but because we're talking about a rectangle, you don't want to worry about a negative. So there, there's one of our dimensions. Your length has got to be 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into this equation right here, and now I can figure out what the w is. If I put that in there, 36 over 6, that's equal to 6 also. So that means that that's my first answer. It says, what dimensions produce the smallest perimeter? The dimensions that produce the smallest perimeter will be width of 6, and this will, of course, be in inches, and then your length has got to be inches also. That's the first part of the question. Then the other question says, what is the smallest possible uh, perimeter? Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to put both of these back into the original one, and you can find out what the perimeter actually is. You don't want to do, of course, we know that when we multiply, we're going to get 36. It's not asking for area. It's asking for perimeter. So let's put these back into here. Perimeter is equal to 2 times the width, 2 times 6, plus 2 times 
6 here, and so you get 12 plus 12. That means that 24 inches is your perimeter. It's not going to be inches squared because we're not talking about an area here. We're talking about dimensions, how far it is all the way around the outside of the rectangle.